Hi, friends. So this week is going to be a little chaotic. Well, actually, it probably won't seem chaotic to you because editing, but to my brain, it's a mess. Let me explain. So I had a video all planned out, and then it came time to actually do the project, and I was completely uninspired. So I scrapped that. But then I had no idea what to do instead. So after wasting an entire evening staring at things in my craft room, I saw this video by Creative Paula. And in it, she mentioned that a lot of her foam clay had dried out before she ever opened it. And I kind of freaked out a little bit because I have a lot of foam clay sitting in my craft room. So I decided that I was going to go on a mission to use it all up. And that just made my brain explode with ideas. I want to make figurines and bowls and vases and artworks, and I just have so many ideas. But I've only ever actually made a couple of things with foam clay, so I don't know if any of that is even going to work. So this week, I'm going to start with the easiest of my grand ideas. I'm going to make some little flat 2D figures and glue magnets on the back. Because I figure if I'm able to successfully make 2D things, then I can move on to 3D things. So first, if you've never heard of foam clay, it's a type of air dry clay, but it's more doughy and soft than other types of air dry clay. And when it dries, it's really lightweight and a little bit squishy, you know, like foam. So the first things that I'm going to try to make are some little fruits. I made a little strawberry once and most fruits are pretty easy shapes, so I think this will be a good start. I started with a watermelon making the little pizza slice shape, cutting off the back so that it was rounded, cutting a little rectangle for the rind, and then again for the skin. I tried to smooth out the edges, but I kind of smudged the line, and then I tried to cover that with a spare piece of clay and made it way worse. And then I just continued to destroy it. Great start, Rose. So I pulled that off to try again, and this time I tried to smooth the edges as I went, being really careful not to smush them too much. As long as your foam clay isn't too dried out, it generally sticks to itself really well, so you don't need to worry too much about smoothing out the seams. Unless you want to, I guess. Next, I'm going to form a little strawberry shape, and make some little green leaves to go with it. I used a plastic knife to add some veins onto the leaves, and then just stuck them on. I did stab at the strawberry a few times, just to create a little bit of texture for the clay to grab onto, but it doesn't really require as much scoring as other clays. Next, I'm going to make an orange. Slice. An orange slice. This time, I decided to work in layers. So the first layer was an orange circle, then a slightly smaller light orange circle on top of that, and then an orange circle cut into little slices. I did cut down the slices a little bit so there would be some space between them. I gave the whole thing a gentle smash so that it would be good and stuck, and kind of lost some of the space between the slices, but oh well. To make a peach, I mixed a little bit of red into some of the light orangey color. Once I formed the peach shape, it still wasn't peachy enough, so I gave it that iconic butt crack. I used a little bit of water to smooth out any cellulite, and then I gave it a little leaf. One thing that you do have to be kind of careful of is when the clay is wet, the color can transfer. So having paper towels handy to wipe your hands off is important. Next, let's make a banana. My plan was to make the actual banana shape and then layer a darker yellow for the peel. But not this particular yellow because it's way too dried out. Once I found a juicier clay, I rolled out a thin layer, cut a sharp peel line, and then formed it onto the banana. The second half got a little goofy looking at the seam, but it's not bad enough to scrap the whole thing. To use up some more of the yellow, I made a little lemon with a little leaf. A little lemon with a little leaf. Oh. I made a lemon with a little leaf and a pineapple. I added some crisscrossy pineapple lines and some green leaves up on top. I mixed a little bit of green into the remaining yellow to make a greeny yellow pear color. Then I mixed even more green in to make an apple. I left all of these to dry for two days. 
They're looking pretty good, but I'm going to use some acrylic markers to jazz them up a little bit. I started by adding way too many seeds to the strawberry, darkened the leaf veins, colored over areas where the clay color transferred, added a slightly more logical amount of watermelon seeds, darkened that peach crack, colored the crissy crossy lines, and added juicy highlights to each fruit. And here's how they all look. There's a few mistakes, but overall I'm pretty happy with them. So next, I'm going to try something a little bit harder, with a few more interesting shapes, and make some cute little sea creatures. I'm starting with a nice chubby little pink octopus, because making five circles is well within my skill set. Then I tried to make a starfish, which is apparently not in my skill set. The first one came out looking like a horror movie monster, so I tried to make one a little shorter and chubbier, but it's still just okay. Why is making stars so hard? This purple blob is going to be a stingray. A very thick stingray. But this purple clay was a little more dried out than some of the other ones, so I didn't want to overwork it too much. I mean, I already had to use a lot of water to smooth out some wrinkles where I bent his tail. For something a little harder, I'm going to try to make a fish. But rather than form it all from one piece, I'm going to start with the body and then add a tail and fins. I wasn't worried about the seams showing, but I did spend some time blending out the back just to make sure that they stuck on really well. I'm going to use paint to add details to these as well, so I just need basic shapes right now. For this minty, chunky whale, I spent a lot of time working on this tail fin and getting it just right. It might be possible to sculpt these out of one piece, but I'm just not that confident right now. And I don't really mind how cute and cartoony these are looking. Of course I had to make a shark, but not my usual shark shape. This is going to be a hammerhead. I want the tail and fins to blend in a little bit more, so I added some really thin and wet pieces of clay to make it easier to blend. This is probably not the right technique, and it's not perfect, but it worked for me. Last, I added on his big old head and cut in some little gills. Next, I'm going to get a little ambitious and try to make a seal. I am working off of references for the sea creatures, so this is going to look a little strange until I add the details later with paint pens. This gray clay is also a little too dried out, so it's kind of stiff, but I think I made it work. I mean, the tail looks like it got hit by a boat propeller, and his head is a little squashed, but all in all, he's okay. This last one I'm going to make is a seahorse, and this one is going to have a lot of parts, so I'm pretty nervous. First, for his body. And you can see on the tail how the clay acts when it's starting to get a little too dried out. There's not a super great way to revive it, at least that I've found so far, so I just use lots of water and smooth it the best that I can. The other problem with clay that's starting to dry out is that it doesn't stick very well to itself, so attaching this head gave me a lot of trouble. I tried water, scoring, blending, squishing, and I just ended up having to let it sit for a bit and let some of the water dry out before I could very carefully move on to the fins. This is the same purple clay that was already a little too dry when I used it on the stingray, and since I already struggled with the head, I probably should have gotten out a new clay, but I hate wasting things, so I'm determined to make it work. After drying, they all look pretty good. Despite some of the clay being too dried out, all of the parts stayed stuck, and there's only a few tiny cracks. Some of the backs are pretty ugly, which isn't really a problem, and a few are real thick. Also, I am going to pick the less ugly of the two stars to keep. For most of these, I'm just going to add a little face and some highlights. I'm going to try to keep the faces really consistent with cute pink cheeks and tiny little smiles. I want this to look like a cohesive set, even if the references I was using were different styles. For some of the more detailed animals, I added things like bellies and other body markings. The paint does sink into the foam a little bit, 
and because it's not a hard surface, sometimes the paint pens don't flow very well. So it does take quite a few coats to get a solid color on the larger areas. Using actual paint with a brush would probably work better, but I'd already started and I'm stubborn. I turned this fish into a clownfish, obviously. And then I tried to make this seal actually look like a seal. Then I really jazzed up the seahorse. It's really cool how much of a difference the little bit of paint on the edges of the fins makes. And this set is done. I really love these. They are so freaking cute. 10 out of 10 would make these again. So the last set I'm going to make is going to be just slightly more involved. I'm going to make some cute bugs, starting with a snail. Like I said, I'm trying to use up as much already open clay as I can, and I've been working on these for three days, so obviously it's drying out just a little bit. I did store them in Ziploc baggies, but I'm not super confident they're the most airtight, so I wouldn't rely on them for long periods of time. The clay still worked fine, but you definitely can see the creases on this snail's shell. Next, I'm going to make a couple of small blue wings and then a fat yellow bee and just sort of smash him onto the wings. I did smush the wings a bit on the edges just so they'd be pretty secure. I mean, no one will see the back, so I'm not super concerned how it will look. Ugh, he's already so cute. Next, I'm going to start with the wings again, but this time it's going to be a butterfly. I layered a few other pieces on top to add some color to the wings, and then I turned them over and smashed them down to really embed the blue into the peach clay. I stuck the wings together, and then since I didn't have a brown color, I used my color theory to mix blue and orange together to make a nice poop color for the butterfly's body. And I just stuck that right on in the middle. I still had quite a bit of blue and peach clay left over, but I couldn't really decide which I liked, so I just slightly mixed them together to make a nice marble and made four long ovals for wings. Then I used more poop color for a long dragonfly body. I think black might have looked better here, but I really wanted to use up what I already had open, and brown looks fine. To use up some yellow and green, I'm going to make a radioactive looking spider. I added some thin wire that I had laying around to all of the legs, so that when I stabbed them into the body, it would help hold them together. I also made some little green balls of clay and smashed those into the top of the body to make some little spots. Since the wire seemed to work pretty well, I decided to use it again to help add a little stability to a little caterpillar. I made six balls with some leftover clay, skewered them onto the wire, smashed them down to make them flat, cut the wire, and then used my last bit of poop clay to add a little head. Now, these last two are the first ones I genuinely don't like, and I really considered not including them but I think it's important to show my failures just as much, so here you go. I originally wanted to make ladybugs, but again, I wanted to use up the clay and not waste any. So I mixed my leftover yellows together and my leftover greens together. I made some circle bodies and some smaller circle heads, made a second circle that I cut in half for the wings, and then I smashed on some yellow spots. They aren't god-awful, and there will probably be some of you that like them, but I'm just not a fan of the colors and of how thick they are. They kind of look like an elementary school art project to me. So after everything dried, it's time for paint. For the caterpillar, there wasn't much room for anything, so I just added a face and some highlights. For the snail and spider, I also added some body markings. I gave the spider giant eyes to try and make him a little less creepy and a little more cute. The fat little bee, which is honestly the whole reason for making bugs in the first place, got some stripes and a face. I felt like the wings on the butterfly were still a little too bland. Butterflies need intricate wings. So I added some more spots with pink and blue markers and then painted the edges of the wings black and of course added a face. On the dragonfly, 
I use metallic markers in pink and blue to add a thick border across the top of the wings and then added some veins across them. And I really like how these turned out, which is good because all that's left is these dang beetle things. First, there's a couple of spots where the green sort of stained the yellow clay, so I tried to use a yellow paint marker to cover that up. But the color didn't match as well as I thought it would, so I ended up coloring the whole body and head with the marker. And then that just looked blotchy and weird, and I didn't like this enough to begin with, so I didn't really try too much harder to fix it. I gave them some eyes, which I don't know which way their face is facing, so then I just called it done. And this whole set is done. These are weirdly some of my favorite and some of my least favorite. I love the butterfly and dragonfly. And the bee is just chef's kiss, my baby boy. But those beetles are not it. I finished all of these off with three coats of glossy varnish and glued magnets on the back. And they're done. I love these so much. I had a really relaxing and fun time making them, and they were really pretty easy and came out so insanely cute. I want to make a million of them, but I won't because now I can try to move on and make actual sculptures. So what do you think? Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.